What's up? Two the time. Yeah! Come on! Put up! Favourite part of the Sleek Geeks podcast, that little sting. I love it. Got a question. We always ask people to send us questions at Sleek Geeks on Twitter. We'll answer the questions if we possibly can. Got a great Twitter question here from Richard Dawkins. Wow. You know Richard Mr. Dawkins? Mr. Evolution. Yeah. Um, DNA. What was his very... Coined the one? phrase the selfish gene. That's one, yeah. All that sort of stuff. He gets a lot of stuff. He's a great believer in rationalism and humanism at the moment. Speaks mm. out on behalf of atheists around the world. He's asked a question. Oh, I should strictly point out he didn't say, Dear Sleek Geeks, please, can someone... Can you help me with this? He just put this question generically on Twitter to anyone, but mm-hmm. I, I happen to see it. So here's your answer, Richard. Is it Bernoulli's force, is Richard... Richard asks, Richard from England asks, is it Bernoulli's force that pulls the shower curtain to you and wraps you in clammy embrace? Is this the force that lofts a thousand... Seven four sevens. Now that's Richard's question. Mm-hmm. Let's go back a step first of all before we do Bernoulli's force. Mm-hmm. The Bernoullis. How awesome were the Bernoulli and this family? Thing, yeah, they, they, they were artists and painters and sculptors and scientists. And if you go to Florence today, they still have a shop selling eyeglasses. And one day I want to go into that shop. Back in the sort of sixteen uh, late sixteen hundreds, you had Jacob Bernoulli, after whom the ben- the Bernoulli numbers are named. A very deep part. And he's different from Daniel Bernoulli. Yeah, yeah, very different. Very deep part of mathematical um, number theory. The Bernoulli numbers. He was sort of the progenitor of them all. Then you have got Nicholas, uh, Johann. A, a, a string of Nicholases. Oh, mate, Nicholas Bernoulli was a painter in autumn of Basil. Then there's a series of Nicholas Math, um, Bernoullis who were mathematicians who worked on curves and the early calculus stuff. Then you've got your Daniel. Daniel, he's a Bernoulli. One. And then a string of Johann the second and Johann the third, who were all mathematicians, physicists who did some incredible stuff. Wow. Let's go to the Bernoulli effect, as it's called. Which I can demonstrate with a sheet of paper. What, well, here's a sheet oh, of paper right paper. here. What is okay. the Bernoulli effect? Now, firstly, what I'm going to do with holding this sheet of paper at right angles to the camera pointing at me yep. is blow on the bottom side of the paper. Sure. I'm holding this sheet of paper vertically. Yep. I'm suspending it at the top two corners. And if I blow it you know, halfway in the middle of the page, tell me what happens. Yeah, if you blow it, it moves away. I blow... Onto the paper and it moves away from me, doesn't yeah, it? Sure. Yeah, okay, now I'm going to try Pretty this. obvious. Okay, here we go, getting a big breath. Now I'm going to blow over the top of the paper. So I'm getting the paper, I'm giving a little bit of a curve at the top. Yep. I'm holding it just immediately underneath. It's almost the touching your it. bottom lip, yep. Yeah, just touching my And then I'm going to blow over the top of it, right? Yep. Here we go. It, it came up. It came up with a questioning and a bit of amazement in yours. It came up. Yes. How come it came up? Daniel was the guy who worked that out. Those Bernoullis, they were hot dudes. So he realised that if you've got a moving airstream or any fluid at all, you've got to really pump it out harder. Harder. You've got, oh. to, you've got, to, you've got to pump it. That's right. You've got to get that impact, right? So he realised that if you've got a moving airstream, a moving fluid, which counts water and air, so a liquid or a gas, if you've got a moving fluid, imagine it's sort of going through and it's going up and over a hill and down a valley and up and around. He says it always has the same amount of energy, but the amount of energy, depending on where it is and how fast it's moving, gets reapportioned mm-hmm. inside. So it might have so many 100 units of energy, but sometimes it's got 80 units of kinetic energy, and a little bit later it might have 80 units of gravitational energy because you've pushed up a hill, and it always gets reapportioned. They stay in, but the total stays in sync. The, yep. the total stays the same. So when I'm uh, this air's coming out of my mouth, it's got the same amount of energy, I blow over the top of the paper. I'm now pushing it out fast. You've got to push it fast, and therefore it's got more kinetic energy What's being lost? Pressure energy. There's less pressure on the top, more underneath. And so magically, the piece of paper lifts up. It moves from the area of high pressure up to fill in where the lower pressure is. Yeah, the surrounding area. That's it. So it, the air over the top has high velocity energy. It has low pressure energy, low pressure on top of the paper, more pressure underneath, and it lifts up. And Daniel realised this. OK, so now I hop in a shower, and they didn't have showers back in Daniel's day, I hop in the shower, I turn on a nice warm shower, I've got a shower curtain because I'm very modest, Carl, you know me, I'm washing away, and suddenly the shower curtain starts to come towards me. And wrap around you. What's happening there? Because you've got the... uh, the, the... Ah. Okay, number one, 
These simple things are not that easy. Almost certainly it is not just simply the Bernoulli effect. Yep. It is pr- almost certainly that, plus a bit more of this and a b- bit more of that, et cetera, et cetera. And what role do we think the Bernoulli effect m- plays in the shower probably curtain? Most of it, okay. Probably most of it. Probably most, right? So the air, the water droplets are falling down, and they're a bit sticky, they have a bit of friction, they drag some air with them, so air is being dragged down. So across the front of the shower curtain, air is moving. Because the air is moving, it's got more velocity energy, therefore it has less pressure energy. And therefore the normal pressure behind it pushes it towards you and wraps its sticky self around your body. So if I was measuring the air pressure either side of the shower curtain Mm -hmm. while the shower is running, Mm -hmm. I'd be measuring lower pressure the human side, the water side of the shower curtain than on the rest of the bathroom side, would I? Presumably. That experiment may or may not have been done, but I have done the experiment with a candle, which is tricky to keep going in a shower. I would have said, yes. Yeah, but they tend to go out. So, but, but what you can do is... Have ah, a the life of a scientist. So you're in the shower with a candle... Sometimes I take cocktails in there with me, but that's another story. The water's so, running. The water's running. And so you, you move the candle around the place, and then suddenly you can see that the candle flame bends towards. It bends horizontally, parallel to the ground. It bends towards the falling water, and the shower court curtain is moving towards it. And yes, I did put a hole in the shower curtain. Okay, so, so the fact that when you hold a candle, you see the flame tilt away from the shower curtain... Towards, towards where the water is falling. running, yeah. that shows that there's decreased pressure there and the... OK. Yeah. So it's an imperfect experiment and almost certainly there are other effects involved on top of it, but that's a mark one answer. I've read that some people think it's to do with the warmth of the water. You're having a hot shower, but even if you do it with a completely cold shower the effect will still happen. The shower curtain will still come across. I'm I'm proud of saying that I have had a cold shower and I explored the effect and the effects were virtually the same within experimental error and I got cold and I had the goosebumps to prove it. Did I get an Ig Nobel Prize for this? No. Or get published in the BMJ? No, but still, I'll, I'll I'll rise above that. And thankfully, we didn't start videoing our Sleek Geek discussions until after you had done the experiment in the shower. For that, we can be truly thankful. Yes. But, Carl, let me ask one further question, then. It was contained in our young Richard's question. Very mm-hmm. good question, young Richard. He should stick out oh, this science thing. Love, love Dickie's work. Is this the same force that gets aeroplanes off the ground? Now, is this to do with the wing of a plane? As the plane's flying forward, the wing is mm-hmm. curved yeah, go towards the top, yeah. flat on the bottom. So my understanding's always been as that wing pushes through the air, air travelling over the top of the wing has to go further than air travelling under the wing before they meet up again at the back, so it has to go a bit Mm -hmm. faster. Therefore, there's lower air pressure above the wing than below. That drives the plane to rise or stay at its height. Is that vaguely what's going on? That's what I thought until I started bringing this up in the tea room at physics. Ah! Did I get put in my place? What did they say in the tea room at physics? Let's go to the tea room right now. Well, Carl, how do the air molecules know they have to meet up at the back end of the wing? Hmm. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and they say, then they said, hey, Carl, how come a, a high performance plane can fly upside down? Yeah, all right. <laughs> Bugger if I know. So, yes, that's part of it, that you do have the air going faster over the top of the wing, and therefore it has lower pressure. Thank you very much. One of the many fabulous Bernoullis. The other part of it is the cutter. Junkowski effect. Look it up in Wikipedia and give yourself an hour to read it. K U T T A Junkowski, however you spell that. And that's to do with sort of friction and dragging air molecules along with me. And But more importantly is angle of attack. An aeroplane actually flies with a slight head up altitude, about a degree or two or three. And so you can also have the flappy things down at the back of the wings, and so the air comes along, hits the flappy thing, and then bingo, it it gets deflected down, the aeroplane gets deflected up. So the Bernoulli is part of it, a strong part of it, but there's also these other factors as well. You want to become an aeronautical engineer, put aside two two years of your life. Okay, thank you very much, Richard. Great question. If you want to ask us questions at Sleek Geeks, at Sleek Geeks on Twitter is the place to send that question. A bowling crony asks the Sleek Geeks, why is it... When you can't find something, it's always in the last place you look. I've got a great answer for this. It's very obvious. I think your answer might be right.